Ah, a good night's sleep. Just what we need after a long day of working hard and facing stresses. But let's face it, our sleep schedule sucks. All of us have heard a thousand times why sleep is important, and I'm sure we all come up with a thousand excuses too. My name is Hannah, and I'm here to help you take action once and for all in sleeping better, and as a result, losing that stubborn fat. And the only way to truly take action towards fixing your sleep schedule is when you understand exactly how sleep affects your weight loss journey. And this is is that video. Chapter 1 Weight Loss and Sleep Let me introduce you to your appetite regulating hormone duo leptin and ghrelin. Ghrelin is otherwise known as the hunger hormone because it signals hunger and stimulates appetite while leptin, your stop eating I'm done hormone, tells you when you are full. The purpose of these wonderful hormones is to regulate your energy balance, helping you consume just the right amount of food, not too little or not too much, to maintain a stable body weight. Now when you don't sleep enough your once healthy leptin and ghrelin levels go a little loco. Ghrelin increases with a lack of sleep, whereas leptin decreases with a lack of sleep. This means you'll feel a ravenous hunger that you can't satisfy, resulting in eating more food and more often as well. Someone from our weight loss Discord server, hi if you're watching, mentioned the difference in food cravings between sleeping 7 to 8 hours and being sleep deprived was crazy. In fact, they mentioned that you could probably find a correlation between the days they had lack of sleep to their Uber Eats orders. Think about it this way, when you don't get enough sleep, your body tricks you into thinking it needs more food food, even though your actual energy needs has not changed. It's like your body has set off a false hunger alarm. To see this in action, let me introduce you to a fascinating study with 80 overweight participants. These participants were sleeping less than six and a half hours each night. The study had two groups. One group stuck with their usual short sleep, while the other group aimed to boost their sleep to eight and a half hours each night. The results were eye-opening. The group that enjoyed the extra sleep ended up consuming 270 calories fewer each day, and as a result, lost roughly a pound over two weeks. Meanwhile, the group that didn't change their sleeping patterns ended up gaining around a pound in the same time frame. Not only does lack of sleep affect how much you eat, but it also affects what you eat as well. When you're sleep deprived, you especially want to eat foods that are rich in carbs, sugar, and salt. We're talking bread, pasta, pizza, sugars, lollies, you name it. Everything under the sun that is unhealthy for you, you begin to crave. This rings true to me as well. Four years ago when I was at my highest weight, that was the year I slept the least because I wasn't conscious of my sleeping schedule and that same year I also ate an immense amount of Korean fried chicken, boba and takoyaki. Coincidence? I think not. I mean it makes sense, your body is under this false belief that it needs more energy and so we'll start looking for food that's going to dramatically spike up that glucose level and we all know why that is bad. Check out my glucose video if you haven't already. Okay so we've established that your body can be tricked but so can your brain. A study conducted in 2013 by Matthew Walker and others showed that lack of sleep caused direct changes in the brain that prevents you from making healthy choices. In this study, 23 healthy participants took a series of MRI scans. First, when they had a full night of sleep and second, when they were deprived of sleep. While being scanned, they were shown a whole range of different foods, from foods that were very healthy to things that were much more desirable but very unhealthy. Their brain responses as they viewed these foods were then measured. The result? Well, when those individuals were underslept and sleep deprived, the frontal lobe regions of the brain in charge of impulse control went completely offline and the emotional centers usually associated with instant gratification and short-term pleasures which are more active in people with obesity were ramped up. In other words they couldn't think properly. As shocking as the results of that study was an even scarier study found that individuals who weren't getting enough sleep lost 70% of their weight from lean muscle mass rather than fat. So let me drive this home. Lack of sleep makes you lose more muscle than fat when you're trying to lose weight. Why does our bodies sabotage us in this way? Fat is a highly energy rich substance and when you're sleep deprived your body will deliberately become stingy in giving up its fat because it's under this belief that it needs more energy. So what does it do? It begins to metabolize things like muscle which is protein. My lack of sleep was therefore causing me to lose what I wanted to keep and keep what I wanted to lose. So now you know the critical role sleep plays in weight loss. Let's talk about what happens to sleep. Why we talk about needing eight hours of sleep even though it's a myth and finally the importance of a regular bedtime.
Let me introduce you to your two sleep buddies, REM and non-REM. These are the two different types of sleep. In terms of weight loss, your buddy non-REM sleep is the most important. Non-REM sleep is where deep sleep happens and is where your body repairs, strengthens and recalibrates itself. More importantly, during deep sleep, your body is able to regulate its sensitivity to insulin, which in turn improves blood sugar control for the next day, meaning you'll use energy from food more efficiently, feel less tired and manage your food cravings. So how do we make sure we get enough of our non-REM sleep? The answer is easy and one I'm sure you've heard before. Sleep at a regular time each day. I know this is difficult, but a regular sleep schedule is what our bodies crave and need. The internal clock in our bodies, known as circadian rhythm, ticks to the cycles of the sun and moon and tells us the best times to eat, sleep and wake up. The key point here is that this internal clock can only do its job through regularity. When we go to sleep at different times each day, our internal clock slowly goes out of alignment, which begins to affect our sleep. One way this happens is this. The majority of our non-room sleep occurs at a set time each day near the start of our sleep. In a way, your internal clock schedules an appointment for you to have most of your non-room sleep at a set time period each night. And when you decide to sleep later, you end up missing out on your appointment. Even if you got your full hours of sleep, the fact that you slept later means you would have had more REM sleep compared to your non-REM sleep, each which have different benefits. So we now know we sufficiently need both REM and non-REM sleep for optimal performance. As a general rule, we should sleep earlier to give our bodies enough time to ensure we're getting that non-REM sleep. So how much sleep should you get each night? This is a heavily debated topic, but the answer is very simple. Every person requires a different amount of sleep. If you can, try sleeping and waking up without an alarm clock for a week, and then you will know how much sleep you naturally need. And yes, if you sleep a little earlier, you can definitely make this happen. So now that we know the importance of sleep and its impact on weight loss, let's talk about 10 sleep tools to ensure we fall asleep easily, but also stay asleep. Number one, use your bed only for sleep. Our brains are a highly associative device and likes to make associations for everything. For example, coffee equals morning, bath is to relax. However, a lot of us have unconsciously linked our beds to awakeness, thought time or phone time, making it harder to go to sleep. We need to relearn the association that our bed is a place of sleepiness. That is, you only go to bed when you're absolutely sleepy. If you can't go to sleep in bed and you're still awake for 20 to 25 minutes, go outside into your living room instead and keep yourself busy until you're really sleepy. Number two, get rid of that phone. No, this is not about blue light for blue light affecting our sleep turns out to be a myth. The more harmful problem is that our phones are attention capturing devices that are highly stimulating and activating for the brain. You may have had times where you felt quite tired, went into bed and thought just one more TikTok which ended up turning into hours of doom scrolling. This is what they call sleep procrastination. The solution is simple, leave your phone out of reach whether that's outside or away from your bed. Personally, I like to turn my phone on do not disturb and airplane mode as well. Now if you have to use your phone in your room, give yourself the rule to only be using your phone while standing up. Number three, temperature. We can facilitate sleep by lowering our core body temperature. This can be directly done by making your room cool in advance by opening up your windows or taking a warm bath or hot shower before bed. Warm showers help our outer surfaces to warm up, which in turn helps our core to cool down to fall asleep. We want to keep our temperature to be cool as we sleep and to rise up when we wake up. That's why cold showers in the morning work in helping you feel awake because your outer surfaces cool down and our core temperatures rises. Number four, exercise and eating time. Try to stop eating three hours before you go to sleep. If you find yourself too hungry to go to sleep or just need a bedtime snack, try to stick clear of simple carbs. These are turned into energy very quickly, raising up our core body temperatures and making it harder to fall asleep. The same goes with exercise. Try exercising either early in the morning or late afternoon instead of right before you go to sleep so you can optimize metabolizing those calories. Number five, darkness. Our bodies, as we mentioned before, are naturally designed to be in tune with nature, meaning we're programmed to wake up with the sunrise and go to sleep as it gets dark. However, the widespread use of artificial lighting has disrupted this natural cycle, keeping us exposed to light even into the evening. So in the last hour before bed, try dimming down all the lights in your house and use small lamps instead. You'll be very surprised at how sleepy the darkness will make you feel. Number six, get rid of time devices. Phone or clock, Dr. Matthew Walker suggests getting rid of them from your room. This is because we develop anxiety around time as we're going to sleep, which awakens our minds. If you really need an alarm, I suggest you use ones like the sunrise alarm clock. It's sufficient light for me during the night and in the morning, the light gradually turns on to mimic the sunrise. You also have the option to turn off the time completely at night with the alarm still working. Number seven, light exposure. Exposure to natural 
natural light in the morning helps to regulate your body's natural wake up time and promotes a consistent sleep schedule. Not only that, try to view sunlight from sunsets or in the afternoon. This communicates to the brain's circadian clock that it is evening time and that it's time to begin transitioning into sleep for the night. Number eight, don't compensate for lost sleep. Don't sleep in, don't sleep earlier, don't take a nap and don't up your caffeine dose. This is so that we don't disturb our internal clock. All these things I just mentioned are short term gains, but long term losses for your sleep schedule. Hold it out as close to your natural bedtime. Number nine, journal and meditate. It's always right before I go to sleep that I start thinking about how my day was, how yummy lunch was, random content ideas, or just ruminating about things I should or should not have said. As we said before, we can't associate our beds to thought time. So instead, empty and dump your thoughts and your feelings into a journal before you go to sleep. Meditation is also a great way to shift our focus away from anxious thoughts and improve sleep quality. And finally, number 10, have a bedtime routine. Sleep is like landing a plane. You need to slowly ease into the landing. Likewise, we need to slowly wind down when we're going to sleep. Combine all the hacks above. Have a warm shower, dim the lights, have a light stretch, read a book or meditate. Once you figure out the approximate time you fall asleep, give yourself an hour beforehand for your bedtime routine. Let your body and mind know that it is time for sleep. And with that said, that is the end of today's video. Now that we've spent so much time in explaining why sleep is important for weight loss, I hope you guys can start incorporating ways to prioritize your sleep. I'll see you guys in the next video. You got this.